Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have our first example where we have a force acting on an object that's sitting on an inclined plane. Now, the given here is that the component of the force pushing the object up the incline is exactly equal to the component of the weight trying to push the block down the incline, which means this component here equals this component there, and since those are equal to one another, there will not be any friction forces acting on the surface between the block and the surface. There's a maximum friction force capable. The fr maximum friction force will be the normal force times the coefficient of static friction, but since these two components are equal, there's no net force trying to act on the block, trying to either push it up or down incline, and is therefore not being counteracted by the friction forces. Therefore, the friction force is zero. Notice we have the component of the weight of the block equals to 100 newtons pushing straight down. We have a force pushing against the block from right to left horizontally, and then we have the reaction force. Notice in this case the reaction force is exactly equal to the normal force, and it's pointed perpendicular to the inclined plane. It is equal to the component of the weight, which is perpendicular to the plane, mg cosine theta, plus the component of the force, which is perpendicular to the plane, f times the sine of theta. Notice that this angle right here, theta, 25 degrees, is equal to this angle theta here, which is equal to that angle theta over there. Notice that the coefficient of static friction is 0.35, and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.25. However, we're not going to need the coefficient of kinetic friction because nothing is moving on our example. We are going to try to find the magnitude of force and the magnitude of the reaction force. Also, I'm going to show you that you can actually solve the problem quite easily using this combination of forces here. Notice that if we add the force applied to the block and the weight of the block and the reaction force, when we add these three forces together, they should add up to zero. And the angle here, theta, is the same angle as the angle theta there because, again, the reaction force is pointing perpendicular to the inclined plane. If it's not perpendicular, then we will have to find that angle because it will be different than the angle theta. We don't have to do that here. That's for a later example. Well, first of all, let's try to use our traditional methods to try to find the force and the reaction force. First of all, what we can say is that this component here must equal that component there. Uh, let's see here. F times the cosine of theta must equal mg times the sine of theta. In other words, f is equal to the weight, mg, times the sine of theta over the cosine of theta, which of course is equal to the tangent of theta. Now when we plug in these values, this is equal to 100 newtons times the tangent of 25 degrees, and with a calculator, that shouldn't be too difficult. 25, take the tangent of that, times 100, and we get a total force of 46.6 newtons. 46.6 newtons for the force applied to the block. Now the reaction force. The reaction force here is equal to the normal force, which is equal to the mg cosine theta plus f sine theta. So the reaction force R equals mg cosine theta plus f times the sine of theta. Now that we know the value for f, this is equal to mg cosine theta plus, well, might as well plug in the values, right? I can write the equation forever. Let's plug in the values to get the actual answer. This will be 100 times the cosine of 25 degrees, and that's of course 100 newtons, uh, plus 46.6 newtons times the sine of 25 degrees. All right, let's see what we get. Since we already have this in the calculator, times the sine of 25, all right, that's 19.7 newtons, so that's plus 19.7 newtons. Add it to this, so plus 25, take the cosine of that, times 100, that's 90.7. 6 newtons, and when we add that together, we get 110.3 newtons 
for the reactionary force. All right, so that's how we can do this in a traditional sense. We simply add the components of the forces together to solve for F and R. However, we can also use this triangle right here, and we can use the concept of the cosine of theta and the concept of the tangent of theta. Notice that the cosine of theta, by definition, is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Now, here, that's the adjacent side that's known. The hypotenuse is not known. So in this case, that would be the cosine of 25 degrees is equal to the adjacent side of 100 newtons divided by r. Or r equals 100 newtons divided by the cosine of 25 degrees. So r is, well, let's do that and see. Hopefully, we get the same answers we do here. So we have 100 divided by the cosine of 25. And sure enough, we get hmm, the exact same answer, 110.3 newtons. Notice how much easier it is to do it like this. Secondly, we can use the concept of the tangent of theta. The tangent of theta, by definition, is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side. So in this case, this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side. So we have the tangent of 25 degrees is equal to F over 100 newtons. In other words, F is equal to 100 newtons times the tangent of 25 degrees. And again, with the calculator, 25, take the tangent, times 100, we get 46.6 newtons. And that's hopefully also the answer we got here. And sure enough, it's the same answer. So here is the beginning where you can see that Yes, you can do this in traditional sense. We can take each of the forces. We can divide each of the forces into the parallel and perpendicular components to the surface. However, if you then draw a triangle by using these three forces, the force applied, the weight of the object, and the reaction force put into a triangular shape here, knowing the angle theta, you can very easily solve for R and F using that. So either way, you get the same answer but you may decide one method is easier for you than the other, and that's how it's done.